Okay. Um, so we're going to do action potential, which is usually a scary thing for um, uh, anatomy and physiology. One student, um, A and P two students, you're going to really learn how to apply this stuff. So this tends to be one of the tougher things to the concepts to, to deal with with uh, uh, anatomy and physiology. So I wanted to make sure we, when you get to that point, if you haven't already, you can um, use this material to help you to solidify this stuff. So I'll be asking questions, okay? Um, if you don't know the answer, that's fine. We'll just work our way up there. But there, I would imagine if you don't know the answers, it's gonna be a very common thing that people don't know the answers. Don't get paranoid about it, okay? All right, so cations versus anions. What's a cation? What's an anion? Right, this is stuff from A and P, or, uh, from biology. A cation is any electrolyte or ion that has a positive charge. So when I say cation, think of a happy cat, or think of it being positive. Okay, an anion. Well, I don't have anything to uh, give you some kind of mnemonic for that, but it's any negative charge. If you know this one, you know this one. Right. Okay. So we're going to say cations and anions. We're working, we're, we're working our way up to that point of understanding um, action potentials. Okay. Now, what is the most common cation inside the cell? So again, a cation is a positive charge. So we're looking for what's the most common or most abundant cation inside the cell. Ion that has a positive charge. What? Potassium. Yeah. Okay. What's the most common cation outside the cell? Sodium. Sodium. Okay. We'll go a little bit further. You're on a roll. Okay. Okay. So, what's the most common anion outside the cell? Um. Anion has what kind of charge? Negative. Negative. So think of a charge or think of an ion that has a negative charge to it. Is it A D? No. It's chloride. Oh, chloride. so let me oh, let me right. right. So let me sh first show you about that memorization, how to get rid of that memorization and, and that paranoia that you might have by doing this kind of mnemonic. I think you understand what I'm drawing over here, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you know salty banana, mm -hmm. okay? Now we've learned this in kindergarten. A banana is loaded with what? Sugar. Well, okay, sugar <laughs> too. All right, but I'm talking about ions. Oh. It's loaded with... Potassium. potassium. Okay. So bananas are loaded with potassium. Someone's low on potassium, eat a banana. Right. Okay. So. And I heard if you have, you have the eye twitch, that means you're low on potassium. So they say eat a banana. It could be calcium too. We won't oh. go there. We won't go there. We won't go there. Oh, okay. And then the salt, regular household table salt, it is made up of what ions? Um, positive? No, well, what ions okay. specifically? Sodium right. chloride, right? Oh, right, right so right. that's what I'm saying is, is that table salt is sodium chloride, right? right. right? You've heard that. The, the sodium and a plus and the chloride. Correct. Are my, okay. So what's going to happen here, this will help you to memorize that inside the cell, it is loaded with potassium. That's our abbreviation for potassium, right? Okay. And then outside the cell, it is loaded with sodium and it also is loaded with chloride. So see in this picture, I refer to it as the salty banana. You know that inside the cell is loaded with potassium. Outside the cell, you're loaded with sodium and chloride. Now there is, we won't go into it, but the most common anion inside the cell is phosphate. But we won't go into that. These are more of the important ones to understand when we uh, deal with the action potential. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, we're doing baby steps to get there. Okay. You know what a cation and anion are. We now know what is the most abundant cations and anions inside and outside the cell. Now we're going to be dealing with something called diffusion. 
or working our way up there. Now, let me also tell you that even though potassium is loaded inside the cell, that does not mean that there's no potassium outside the cell. It's just that there's more potassium inside than it is outside. Same thing with sodium chloride. There is sodium chloride inside, it's just that there's more of it outside. Okay, now let's go on to the next step. We'll get you up to that point where it's gonna make sense. All right, so we have a cell. Okay, and I'm going to use color coded here so that you can understand things. Okay. Potassium, I'm going to use as blue. Okay. Okay, and basically they're blue dots. Okay. So we have a lot of potassium inside the cell. You can see that, right? Yeah. Loaded with it. But like I said, even though there's potassium inside the cell, it doesn't mean there's potassium, there's no potassium outside the cell. There is, it's just not that much. Right. But there is. I'm hoping that comes up. Yep, yeah, it comes up. Now, our next phase. That there is what we call potassium channels over here. Gateways, tunnels. That when this is open, these gates of this channel, like a tunnel, open, potassium could either go outside the cell or inside the cell. Okay? Just to let the ion through the potassium. It's right. It's just allowing only certain things to go through there. Now. And that's a protein channel. It's a that's a protein channel. Uh -huh. Okay. So my question is, see where you are in your studies. That if this is a potassium channel, it is only going to allow potassium to go in or out. But there's a little catch here. There is more potassium inside the cell than there is outside the cell. So would you expect the, the potassium to go out of the cell or would you expect the potassium to go into the cell? Leaving the cell, exiting the cell. Right. Why? So they can be more balanced. So right. That is a form of going from a high concentration to a, to a low. That is also referred to as, starts with a D, ends with effusion. Oh, diffusion. See, you know, it's a type of, uh, it's yeah. to be your tongue, right? Okay. So we're looking at this setup. And that's a natural thing, going from a high concentration to a low. Okay? It can't go the other way around. We'll talk about that later. Likewise, we have sodium channels. I'm sorry, sodium, and we have more sodium outside. outside the cell than we do inside the cell. But that does not mean that there is no sodium inside the cell. Right. It just means that we have a lot more. Right. More outside than inside, so it's less inside. Correct. And they're going to. And then we may have this. It's kind of sad, right? But they also have channels. And they're going to go inside. Well, because let's get, okay, so that's, so like that, these sodium channels are either going to, uh, okay, I'm getting out of the picture as well. So these sodium channels can allow sodium to leave the cell or enter the cell. It has nothing to do with potassium. Right, right, right. So would you expect the sodium to enter the cell if enter. these gates are open or exit the cell? Enter. Enter the cell. From, to go from a, a, low, a, a high concentration to a low. Right. Okay. Which is again called? Diffusion. Diffusion. Okay. Diffusion is a natural thing. It goes from a high concentration to a low. And then um, the other, well, in water, it would be called osmosis, right? That's specifically... Diffusion for water molecules. Right. Okay. What what osmosis is. Right. Okay. Now we go a step further. You understand this so far. Yeah. We went from the salty banana to understanding yeah. which way the ions will go. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do a step further. Now look at the look at the charges of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
if these potassium channels open, does the cell become more positive or more negative? Okay. Um, you said if the, if the if channel these, opens. If these open, and you're so saying that it's going to go from here to here. It's going to be more negative? Negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you're if these are positive channels and we're losing positive from inside the cell, that means the only way that this is happening is that it's going to become more negative. Or your books may say less positive. Right. Be careful with that with your with your professors and what the book says. That is that's where students usually say, "Oh, I don't like the way that he worded it," because you were memorizing that when potassium leaves, that this becomes more negative. But it's the same thing as saying less less, it becomes less positive inside the cell. Understand the concept. Yeah. Likewise, that when the sodium channels open, sodium comes in, does that make inside the cell more positive or more negative? Less negative or more positive. More positive. Okay. So that's what's going on over here when these gates open, okay? We're good so far? Okay, so far it's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah, Maybe bad. steps, okay. Now the problem is when we deal with action potential, one thing that students, they look at this and they just say WTM. <laughs> they just look at a graph and they don't, they, they start losing it. So I'm gonna build this graph for you because it's important to know, but it's all based on this, okay? now. First thing that we have to talk about is something called potentials. Potentials basically mean like a membrane potential, action potential, local potential. You'll learn all about these later on. But potential, think of it as the charge wants to go to zero, has the potential to go to zero. Okay? It wants to do that. It's like you got a tickle in your nose. You want to sneeze. It's going to happen, right? Right. Okay. So... The potential that we're going to do is that we're going to put, um, if you can imagine this, there is an electrode inside the cell and there is an electrode outside the cell. Mm -hmm. And it's hooked up to a machine. The machine is going to detect the difference between these two where the membrane is. So I'm just making numbers, make it easy for you. If this is positive 10 inside mm -hmm. and outside it is, let's say, negative 5, so the charge will be, what is, I got to do my own math with that one, negative 15, I think? You said positive 5? Yeah, let's, let's say that, let's just make it easier. If, let's say the charge here is positive 8, five. But let's just do this. If the charge is positive eight here and the charge is positive five here, what is the membrane potential? Three. Positive three. Yeah. It's the difference between the two. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So we did all the calculations. This is where all the research did and stuff. And they realized that most cells, at least the muscle cells and neuro, um, nerve cells, have a, what we call a membrane potential. The difference between the two, the magic number is going to be negative 70 millivolts. Okay. That's going to be your magic number. That's what we refer to as the resting membrane potential. At rest, the difference between these two is negative 70 millivolts um, in there. Okay, that's what this membrane is. So it has the potential of becoming zero, because it's not zero. It'll never be zero, that's when you're dead. It has the potential to do something, okay? So that's what we refer to as the resting membrane potential. And our magic number for at least muscle cells and nerve cells is gonna be negative 70 millivolts, okay? Now, let's talk about our wonderful graph, okay? This here is going to be time. This here is going to be millivolts. And I'm going to put some numbers on here. They'll make sense when we get there. Okay. We're going to have 
negative 70 millivolts here, okay? Um, I'm gonna throw in a negative 85. These are some numbers that we're gonna need to, that I'm gonna refer to um, in a bit. Okay, and again, these are millivolts, okay? okay? So, this is what's happening. The resting membrane potential is negative 70. It's not stimulated. This cell is not stimulated. And what I mean by stimulated is something's going to, and they'll talk about it, something is going to stimulate that cell. Something is going to make you sneeze, whether it's a tickle or you smell pepper, something. In this case, it could be light, it could be pressure, it could be um, a sound, it could be a certain chemical. Something is going to stimulate this cell. Yeah. And when it does, it's going to do something to these channels. Now, before I go into that, I have to explain to you something else. That when these channels that we talked about, when they're closed, you would imagine that they're closed and nothing could get through. It's not so scientific like that. What happens is that when they're closed, like you shut off a faucet and it's all the way tight, drip, drip. It's leaky. Yeah. These are leaky. Leaky channels. These are leaky channels, okay? Even though they're, the potassium channels are closed, there's going to be a little bit of potassium still coming out of there. It's a leak. Mm -hmm. And sodium, even though the gates are closed, there's going to be a little bit of sodium coming in. There is more potassium leaving with these leaky channels than sodium coming in. If we have more potassium leaving than there is coming in, so we have more positive leaving than positive coming in, we have 10 positive leaving, giving you numbers, 10 positive leaving, but only three positive coming in, does that make inside the cell more negative or more positive? If you have more, if you're leaving, if you're making more positive leave, then it's going to be less negative, I mean, less positive, which is going to be more negative. Correct. Yeah. That there is why we're getting a magic number of negative 70. It's because of the more fact leaky. that these leaky channels are happening more with potassium than with sodium. It's the, the resting membrane potential is not zero, but it's, it's negative. negative 70. The other reason why it's negative is that we have a lot more negative stuff in here that I'm just not showing you. Specifically, a lot of proteins that are inside the cell have a negative charge. That's going to contribute to this negative charge also. All right? So and just understand that. Like the There's a little bit of chloride, but not as much as it is outside. Oh, okay. okay? But it's most, the negative charge is usually because of two reasons. One, the potassium channels are more leaky than sodium channels. And two, we have a lot of proteins in here that have a negative charge. Okay. And they don't usually leave because they're just too big. They don't leave the cell. They stay in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have this negative 70. Right now, it's at rest. Nothing is stimulating this cell. Then something's going to stimulate it. Like I said, light, stretching, uh pressure, sound, something. You'll learn about all those when you get to the nervous system. So what's going to happen is that when it gets stimulated, these sodium channels are going to open up a little bit. Okay? If they open up, is that going to allow more sodium to go in or more sodium to leave? Um, if they open up more sodium to leave. No, to come in because it's less out there, so it's going to go to more. Which, well, it's more out here than it is in right, here. So it's going inside. Right. So what will happen is, is that the sodium is going to come in. Mm -hmm. Does that make inside the cell more positive or more negative? It makes it. Um, Look at the charge. It's positive, so it will be more positive. It makes it more positive. So what will happen is, so what will happen here is that when this gets stimulated, it's going to start going up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, positive coming in, it's gonna go up. Well, yeah. If the stimulus is so great that it goes beyond negative 55, 
Now we got the sneeze. Now these sodium channels are going to open wide open. And sodium is going to pour inside the cell. What's going to happen to this graph? Would you expect it to go up or down? Less negative or more, more positive. Yeah. So you're going to see go this up, go right? all the way up, past zero to about positive 35. Some books will say positive 30. Some books will have positive 40. We're looking at an average of positive 35. At this point, and I'm using color coding, this is all due to sodium coming in, the red here. When it gets to positive 30, the sodium channels shut down fast. Bam. And no more sodium is coming in. Okay? So keep in mind, when negative 55 happens, the sodium channels open very fast. When it gets about positive 35, the sodium channels close very fast. Is it because too many is coming in? No, it's just the way the, oh, the mechanism oh. works. Oh, okay. Okay? Now, at the same time that sodium channels close very fast, potassium channels are going to open very fast. If potassium channels open very fast, does the potassium want to leave the cell or enter the cell? Leave the cell. Leave the cell. If it leaves the cell, does the cell become more negative or more positive? More negative and less positive, right? Right, more negative, less positive. So you're going to start seeing this come down. See that? Mm -hmm. And it's due to blue, the potassium channels. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to add a few words over here so that you understand this. When this goes up like this, when it goes more positive, mm -hmm. we refer to that as depolarization. And when it goes down to three, four, I think. Right. When it goes down away from zero, we refer to that as repolarization. Now, what is is there a name for it when it's at the top, like in? No, nah, we just say that that's the pivotal, uh, there isn't really a name for okay. it, pivotal turn, something like that. Okay, okay. peak. Uh -huh. Okay, now we're not done yet. Sodium channel gates open very fast here. Sodium channel gates close very fast here. And then the potassium, potassium channel gates really quick. very quickly. Now here's what's different. When it gets to about negative 70, again, oh, it closed, the potassium channels close very slowly. Oh, totally. Why is that? It's just the way the mechanism works. Okay. There's things that have inactivated gates and activated gates. I'm not going to go into that, okay. but understand that. Okay. So think of what's going to happen here. Let's say, um, um, okay, if... The potassium channel gates close very slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, let me show you here. Okay, so I'm over here. You're inside the cell. Yeah. This is outside the cell. Yeah. Okay. So if I if potassium is coming out of the cell, mm -hmm. and this gate closes very fast, how many more can I get out there? Not as much. Not as much. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But if this door closes very slowly, two or three out, people yeah. can still come out, right? Right, right, right? Until it closes. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is that because the, let's see if I get this straight. Okay. Because the potassium gates are closing very slowly, mm -hmm. there's going to be more potassium still coming out of there as it's closing. Can, can you visualize that with the doorway? Yeah. Okay. That means this is actually going to go even further below because more positive is coming out. It's going to go below negative 70 uh -huh. to about negative 85. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the doorway closes again. Now it's, I mean, it's closed all the way now, and then it's going to go back to sodium and potassium leaky channels, and it's going to eventually 
get right back up here to the rest of the tension. We call this area here, where it goes below the negative 70, this is called hyperpolarization. I do remember this. When I took AP one of the other guys. Right. So this is what scares people, but I want you to see it color coded over here and building this so you understand. Thank now, you. here's what, yeah, well, we'll take pictures out. I'm only raising. Okay. So, what, now this is where the questions come in on your tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't memorize, understand the concepts. Mm -hmm. There are some things obviously you do have to memorize though, but I, I kind of took that away by saying the salty banana. Mm -hmm. So, you know which way, and then diffusion, you, you understand right. the concept. So depolarization is due to an influx or sodium coming in, sodium going out, potassium coming in, or potassium going out. Depolarization is due to what? Depolarization is due to... Um, because it's, it's closing faster, so... What is? The... Um, the no, this is not polarization. The, the sodium. Sodium is pulled in passing, so it's less and less. Um, Depolarization. More, oh. more coming in. Oh, more coming in. Oh, it's opening fast. Right. Oh, that's right. right. So, so, so depolarization is due to an influx or uh, sodium coming into the cell. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Think of the charge. Sodium is positive. Repolarization is due to sodium coming in, sodium coming out, potassium coming in, potassium coming out. What? Oh, I'm sorry. What I is? Asked yeah, so repolarization uh -huh. is due to sodium coming in, sodium coming out, potassium coming in, or potassium coming out. That's um, potassium coming out? Right. Right. Because okay. when pop, that's a positive charge, it's, it's going to be coming out. More negative and less positive. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hyperpolarization is due to potassium coming in, potassium coming out, sodium coming in, or sodium coming out. That's when it's it's going back to be in seventy. It's this right? part here. Oh, that part. So it's um when potassium's coming out, right? Correct. Same thing as this. Right. Right. The only difference is is that here the potassium gates are closing very slowly. Right, right. And up top it's opening fast, right? Correct. Right. Everything else is opening right. fast, right. okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's busy. Yes. Okay? Okay, now I can take the picture? No, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, gonna, oh, I'm okay. gonna do some other okay. stuff, I'm gonna, but I'm not gonna erase it, okay. okay? So all this makes sense. This is a hard concept. Yes, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, now let's talk about what happens if, oh, wait, let, let's talk about um, medication. So you see how to apply this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, what's an action potential? What is the purpose of this whole thing? What is that? Can that do any work? Not really. Action potential. It's like a jolt of electricity. If I plug in a wire of a lamp and put it in the outlet and take it right out, one jolt of electricity is going to go to the bulb, turn off, turn it right on. Right. So you have to have a brigade of action potentials one after the other. Right. Right? That's like force, right? The action potential is the force of energy. It's, like energy. it's not really a force. It's, it's because of these gates are opening. Oh. So you're going to be... You have to have a whole brigade, one after the other, after the other, after the other, okay? Now, I do want to also mention, too, that what we also have here, before I get into the medications, what I want to also show you here is that if it reaches negative 55, you will have an action potential. An action potential is an action potential is an action potential. You will have a full action potential. I don't care if it... You know, at negative 55, the, oh, the sodium channel gates are going to open no matter what. Right. 
And you can't have another action potential until it reaches negative 70 once again. So you can't sort of say stimulate the cell at this point here right, and expect you to have another one going, I'm gonna draw like this, up like that. You can't. You could all, it's what we refer to as an action potential is an all or none principle. You will get a full action potential if it reaches negative 55, we call that the threshold. Oh, yeah. So if it reaches threshold negative 55, you will have the full action potential. However, if it never makes it to negative 55, you won't have an action potential. There is no partial action potentials. You either have one or you don't. Right. Okay. Now, the other thing is that this has to go through what we refer to as a refractory period. That while this is going on, you can't do another action potential. It has to go through a refractory period. The best way I can explain this is like flushing a toilet bowl, not the toilet bowls that are in the school, the home ones. Right, right, right. When you flush the toilet bowl, you can't immediately flush it again, can you? You have to wait until the tank fills up with water again. Same thing with this. There's a refract, so the toilet bowl, I, I'm probably the only teacher that can actually refer to the action potential of the toilet bowl. And we can expand with that one, but we won't, okay? But that's what I'm saying, is that there's so a- the threshold when you wait for the water to, um, to, to fill up again? So right, you, before you can actually do that. So you have to have this completely done to get to here. So think of this is the time when the water is going away and then the water is filling up in the, in the tank. And then you could flush it again. I don't care how hard you're pulling on that handle. You can't, um, uh, you, you can't do another flush. Right. It's just not going to happen, right? I'm not talking about the ones in the school. That's right. turbo right. flush. Right. That's different. <laughs> okay. So it has to have this refractory period. And I don't want to go into it, but there's something called uh, an absolute refractory period. And then there's something called um, a relative refractory period. But it's about this time in here. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about what happens. All right. So this is an action potential. An action potential, just so you can see where we can apply this. If I put a needle in my hand over here, okay, now I don't feel pain because when you put a needle here, there's an action potential that's going to go this way to my spinal cord, it's gonna, gonna go up to my brain, and now my brain is gonna say, needle in there, you're in pain, ow. So it has to reach my brain for me to interpret what's going on so that I can interpret it as pain. Does that make sense? So if there's a way that we can block that to go to my spine and brain, then we won't have pain here, will we? Okay, so we could do different things, okay? If we don't, we, we need to stop the, uh, the action potentials or at least slow them down, okay? What happens if I take this, if I take a medication, don't worry about names of medication, okay. but if I take a medication and I block this sodium channel from opening? Then no sodium can get in. If no sodium comes in, will I have an action potential? No, because it, it won't go. It won't go up. Right. So therefore, you're not going to have that action potential to go to your brain. Right. So we have medications that would do that. It's called lidocaine. Okay. That's how that works. Okay. There's other things so that we could do. The patch, right? If you're in pain, they put the patch on. And it, it, right. And then you do a patch over there. Or we could do liquid or something. There's a lot of different ways we could do things. But there's a lot of different painkillers, which I'm, this is not a course that we're going to do right, about. Right, right, right. But I want you to understand what stops uh, or what stimulates an action potential. Right. Okay? What if, now we didn't talk about this, but we also have another ion to consider. Chloride. Mm -hmm. Is chloride going to be more inside the cell or more outside the cell? Salty banana. <laughs> What's that? Outside. Outside, right? Salty banana. So we're going now, it's gonna get really messy. I realize that. I'm going to, I know you can take a picture, but I'm just gonna erase this part here. That's okay. okay. Can All I right. just um, take a picture? Go ahead. 
This way, and then that part. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now look what's going to happen here. So we have more chloride outside the cell. Let me just make it easier. I'm not going to do a lot, of but let's say there's more outside the cell, and we have some inside, mm -hmm. but we have more outside than we do inside. And yes, we do have chloride channels, just the way we had it before. Yeah. So here's my question. If we open up chloride channels, and remember, going back, chloride can either leave the cell or enter the cell. These are only going to allow chloride to go through there. If we open up chloride channels, would you expect chloride to go into the cell or out of the cell? It into the cell. Less inside, so it's going to go. It's going to break. And that is going from high concentration to a low, also known as? Diffusion. Diffusion. Okay, simple diffusion. That's it. Yeah. Right? If I had, if I had, let's say, 50 people outside this room and two people inside this room, if that door opens, which way are the people going to go? Go into, oh, wait, into the room because yeah, it's 50 room. outside. Right, right, right. Same thing as fusion. Now, um, what's the from a low to a high? What's that? Yeah, called? that's the fusion. Oh, low to, a, low to a high is active. We won't go into okay. that. Okay. So we're going to say that when these chloride channels, when they open, you're saying that it's going to go, the chloride will go inside. Okay. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah. Okay. If chloride goes into the cell, does that make inside the cell more negative or more positive? Be careful with this one. More negative? No, no, because negative is going to... What, what, are these, what charges are here? They're negative. Right? It's negative. Mm -hmm. And we're saying that we're opening these channels. Chloride is going to go inside. Does that make inside more negative or more positive? What, what charges are these? These are negative. These are negative. negative. Are we putting more negative inside? Yeah, more negative. So then what happens to the charge inside? More negative? Yeah, it becomes more negative. If we make, if we open up chloride channels, mm -hmm. are we going to make it go, the action potential go up? Or do we make it go down? Make it go down. Make it go down. So are we charge. gonna are we gonna have an action potential if we open up chloride channels? No. No. Because you have to have depolarization and repolarization. Right. So that's what I'm saying is. We have medications mm -hmm. for pain and for a bunch of other indications. Right. But I'm just giving, I think the easiest one for you to understand is the pain one. Mm -hmm. So we could, I already showed you two ways that we could actually not make you have an action potential. We could either open up sodium channel. I'm sorry, we could either close sodium channels, allowing less positive to come in, or we could open up chloride channels putting more negative inside. Either way, closing this or opening this is going to make the cell more negative, which is going to make you not have an action potential. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is what I want to say. The action potential is actually from negative 55 back to negative 70. Mm -hmm. so what is this area called? Ah, this... Didn't you say that's the threshold? Well, negative 55 is the threshold, right. but what is it from negative, negative 70 negative. to negative 55? You see, here, I don't care how much you're trying to stimulate the cell, it cannot go through another action potential until it reaches here. Right. It's in that refractory period. Right. However, between negative 70 and negative 55, this area right here is referred to as the local potential. Oh. For a local potential, this is where this can go up and down. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably didn't forgot. Right. Well, what we say is if there's something that's going to stimulate it, it's going to depolarize. It's going to go up. If there's something that's going to not stimulate it, 
like chloride channels open or open, then it's going to what we refer to as hyperpolarized. It's going to go down. It's the summation of this up and down, up and down. If it ever reaches negative 55, they win and you will have the actual potential. If it doesn't, then you won't have it. You won't have it. That's the local potential that's happening there. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, one more thing that I need to talk to you about. We have a problem, Houston, because think about this. Just look at the red over here. You're going to always put sodium into the cell. Eventually, I'm just giving you numbers. Eventually, you'll have, right now, you'll have, let's say, 50 out, you'll have, let's say, 100 uh, sodium ions out there and maybe two sodium uh, ions inside. So it's going to go from a high concentration to a low. Right, right, right. Eventually, it's going to go 50 here and 50 here, right? Right. And then it's then it's going to be zero. Then you won't have an action potential, just reach zero. Right. It never should do that unless you're dead. Right. Okay? So we got to always make sure that there is more sodium outside the cell than inside. Than inside. And likewise, you got to have more potassium out, inside the cell than, than outside. Okay, we need to put back the potassium inside the cell. We need to put back the sodium outside the cell. That's not a natural thing because like we said before, that's going from, let's say, look at the sodium. You're going from a low concentration to a high. That's not natural. What is natural is diffusion. High concentration to low concentration. We're doing the opposite. Because of this, it's not natural. You're going to need um, you're going to need an extra amount of energy to do that. So, this is what it is. We have something called the sodium potassium pump. You learned about that, right? Okay. This is what it, what's happening. The sodium potassium pump. is going to, sorry. Okay. So what this pump is gonna do, this needs ATP to happen. ATP is gonna be used to open up this pump. Okay, this is not a natural thing. So this is what's gonna happen. Sometimes it's called the sodium potassium pump. Other people call it the ATPase pump because ATP is you need to use. And what this is going to do is that this is going to have three sodium enter it and leave. All right, so sodium is going to go back out here but it's going from a low concentration to a high. And you will also have two potassium going into the cell. This is doing the opposite. This is correcting both the ions to where it's supposed to be and the charge where it's supposed to be. Three sodium out, two potassium in. Three sodium out, two potassium in. To help you remember that, do you know that song? Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 good. All right, you know that, All right? Uh -huh. So this is what I came up with. Na, na, na. First off, how do you spell na? Oh, look at that. Perfect, okay? And how many times do we say, na, na, na? Look at that. Perfect. I don't know what came first, the song or the learning about the actual potential. <laughs> so look at this. Na, 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 out. Na, 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 out. K, K goes inside. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let me ask you this. Why is it not 
three sodium going out and three potassium going in. Why is it three to two? Because if you'll have the same amount and you don't want to have... What do you mean the same amount? Like if you have three going in and you have three going out, then you'll have three positive out and... Well, they're actually, they're both positive. Right. You're on the right track. Okay. The, it would still correct the ions. You're still going to put the sodium out there. If it was three sodium out and three potassium in, you are still going to put the sodium out and you will put the potassium in. But the charge will remain the same. You put three out here and three in there, not good. So if you put less potassium in there, that's going to bring the, um, it's going to make sure that the resting potential is a negative number, which is what you want. Well, yeah. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes, it's, it it's a big concept. I get it. Mm -hmm. But understanding how this is created, mm -hmm. understanding first, just, let's just review what we just did. You know what a cation is and an anion, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You understand the most common cation inside and outside the cell. Mm -hmm. Anion too, salty banana. We learned about the happy cat, right? Yeah. <laughs> then we learned about this, making sure that you understand that going from a high concentration to a low diffusion. diffusion. The concept of diffusion, okay? And you understand that if positive comes in, this will go up. If positive is leaving, it's going to go down. down. You need to know the, the, the charges of them, Okay. And then we talked about what happened, well, how to build this whole thing that you could only have an action potential or not. There is no partial action potentials. It's either you create one or you don't. I refer to it as the action potentials and action potentials and action potential. The books refer to it as the all or none principle. If it reaches negative 55, you got the action potential. Right. Okay, but then it hyperpolarizes. Right. Then we also talked about medications. And what the purpose of an action potential is. And I showed you about the pain. Right. We stopped it. So you could actually apply that stuff. And then we finally talked about, well, the charges are out there, but we got to get it back to where they belong. That's due to the sodium potassium pump. Right. It needs ATP to do that because it's not natural. You're going, look at what's happening. Let's say potassium. You have less potassium here than it more in here. It's going against the gradient. It's going from a low con concentration to a high. Yeah. That's not natural. So you got to use some kind of extra energy to do that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. We good? Yes. Good. All right.